Hi everyone, and welcome back to Wade's Workshop. So, uh, oh, let's start with a little bit of explanation. We're going to be carrying on with a carburetor today. So, with that said, um, how I typically sort of put a video together is I get a load of clips that I've done in the shed when I'm making something. Tend to show every single sort of thought process, all the rest of it as I go along. And then when I'm up in the house, I'll take all the clips off the camera put them on a laptop and string a video together so last night which was a Friday evening I thought let's string a load of video clips together ready for today's video and then typically once I've got them all together I'll do this intro and I'll do the outro at the end based on what the content of that video is so that that's the way I tend to do things and sometimes there's not enough for a video I've got to do a bit more and sometimes there's too much well, last night I started stringing video clips together and it ended up I had about 59 minutes of uh, a video uh, purely on this carburetor or on the, the sort of next stage of this carburetor. And I thought, well, that's just way too long for a video. Typically about a 40 minute video can take me four or five hours to upload to uh, YouTube. That's the slowest part of the process. So I thought, well, we can't go that way. So I had to take a load of it off. Um, I haven't shortened the clips because I want to show all the detail of this and how I've gone about it. It's, it's, um, and the thought processes and making it. So that's why I've left it um, unedited, no fast forwards, that sort of thing. So that's that's the way I go about it. And uh, a lot of you seem to like that sort of detail and showing you the thought as I go along. So I've left it in. I've cut it short. There's going to be like 25 minutes long. Uh, probably another minute now with this intro, but uh, not to worry. So anyway. On with the carburetor. I've done loads more than you're going to see today, but let's uh, let's get on with it. Cheers, guys. So a little bit of progression. Um, chop the corner off there and put some chamfers around those edges. So uh, that's the outside of the carb inside. So back up in the lathe now and turn the little spigot that's going to fit into the uh, into the manifold valve block assembly. I'll call it. So uh, a little spigot needs to be made on there now. Um, I believe I said 4 mil or 4.1 mil back from the shoulder. So I'll put the collet chuck up. Oops, I'll put the collet chuck up in the lathe. Um, basically hold on this and then obviously that will give me a parallel the other end. I can put a centre in the in the end here and then turn to that. Um, or I'll find some way of doing it anyway. So uh, yeah, that's my next step. Put the collet chuck in the lathe and get that other side a little spigot that's going to enter into the cut into the valve block okay so as you can see held it by the outlet the trumpet end in the collet in the lathe and i've just turned that face down to leave a four mil uh, spigot sticking out and it is 5.4 so i've uh, i gauged up the hole in the manifold so that's 5.4 slight change of plan um, i'm going to leave the throat of the carb having looked at the original uh, the original drawing I'm going to leave the throat of the carb at 4 mil, so uh, that gives a little bit more meat on the end of uh, that little spigot as well. I'm not going to open it up to 3 sixteenths, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there's only like uh, 20, 30 thou bigger, but uh, I'm going to leave it where it is. So, um, okay, that's that feature done. Uh, we're getting places now. Uh, I think it's all the bits and pieces have got to go in it, I'll make next. So, um, I just knocked up one of these and that's going to be the choke spindle which is that one that's going to go in there okay um, detail on the top I haven't done yet but it's basically 12.4 long which is 0.1 shorter little chamfer on the end that's actually worked out about 6.06 .06 and 8 mil on the top um, yeah 6.1 wouldn't fit I gave it a polish and now that one fits in there, so just so that you don't miss anything. I've got some reading set, that's a zero. Face the end. Zero on my DRO should be the 8 mil OD. Just rough this out quick. Should have a nut stuck over there. Basically making the blanks, but doing the end that fits down in the hole. So I'll stop the point one and have a mic up. 
that's changed the tools because they had a parting tool up and then went back to the turning tools so it just makes sure nothing's uh, moved there. Right, okay, that's point one aside, I've left on it according to my DRO. Okay, so we should be 8.2 here. Okay, so it didn't make much difference. Okay, so um I'm sorry, so they say Ugh. losing the plot. Eight point one eight five, okay. Let's just verify that size is eight seven point nine eight seven. Okay, that's close enough. <laughs> um, so this is going to be six point one. So pretty much now, I've already got a zero on the end. Twelve point four. Is the distance then going to go? 12.3 to start with till we get to the end. 12.3. I'm looking for a mil on my DRO which will take the 2 mil off. But I'm going to stop about uh, 0.1 up again. Okay. So I'll stop at 0.9 on a DRO. We're at the 12.3. Right here. Just going to go to the third 12.4 uh, now. Okay. And that's the 0.9 reading. Expecting this diameter to be about 6.2 as it stands at present. Let's have a little read. Six point one. Okay, let's have a measure in the hole. good okay it's good it's not sloppy but it fits and it's not tight don't want it bindy I want a little bit of a space down in there okay Ooh. right then this being the throttle one it needs a hole at the bottom for the jet to come through. So let's just uh, take my center out of there. And put a chuck up. And I need to drill a hole at the bottom. Now I think my hole has got to be 332. Or I think the jet is going to be 332. So I'll have a quick look at my Zeus book. Um, 332. So I think I could put a 2.5 mil hole at the end of there. There's a bit of clearance on the jet. We don't want anything bindy. So I need a small centre drill, 2.5 drill, and just go in there a few mil. Probably about 4 mil would be enough. What have I done with my center drill again? Not to worry, a slightly larger center drill, but that'll be fine. 
we've got the 2.5 drill at the ready. Let's just have a little pack on the end of it. Okay. Didn't really need a centre drill. I could have used a spotty drill, really, but never mind. We've done it now. Okay. Uh, how far are we going to go up? I think about... The hole through it's going to be 4 mil, so I can go at least 4. There's going to be a mil at the bottom, I'd say, so I'm going to say 5 mil. 1... 2... four and a half. Okay, so in the bottle of bottom of the ball valve, we'll call it, is the hole for the main jet to come up through. I think I just need to get a bit of worn out emery on that. Just make sure we got no burr on there. Okay, so there is my throttle with a hole up. So now what all remains, up with a parting tool, clean my tool post, and chop a bit off. Now I can hold back on that 6mm diameter or the other way round to do the features on the other side, which will be when I decide what features need to be on the other side. So let's just go a bit further, I think, a bit closer to the truck. Give myself a bit more meat. I'm going to have to put a throttle lever on this of some description. And it's got to be stepped back down so the little clamp that holds them down is going to have uh, a shoulder to clamp against. Okay. There's the second one with its hole at the bottom. Put the drill away. That's now. Ugh. That's the two of those in position, and they drop down into the throat of the carb. I don't know whether you can see, but uh, uh, the throat of the carb is now blocked off by those two. So uh, yeah, that's those bits made. Um, I think while I got the brass up, I may make. Uh, am I going to make the main jet? Probably not yet. Um, may make the the inlet pipe, perhaps. Could do that. Yeah. Now I think we'll we'll see these through first, and then we'll start making the other bits. So I've stuck the throttle one back up the other way round in a six mil collar. Just going to put a decent face on there. That's better. Okay. We have a little pip from parting off. I think we'll have a little shampoo on the top. Just as a break edge. While I'm at it, I'm going to do the other one the same. There's going to be a different shape on the end of here when I think of what I need, what it needs to be. Um, so anyway, that's that. Now. I'm going to leave it in this state when I drill the cross hole because it gives me more um, possibilities of holding uh, rather than having a turn down bit of what have you with a shoulder. It's just so that I can hold it easy. Uh, you'll see what I mean. So um, I've just clocked up. I put put the part back in the vise here. I'm using the moving vise jaw to clamp the spindle, the brass spindle for the throttle in there so it can't rotate it's all clamped up so I've clocked up the hole and I'm going to pick up on that hole I'm going to double check it by putting a four mil reamer back up and just make sure it all lines up nicely once I've done that I'm going to put like a three mil milling cutter now I've got some long ones or ones that are long enough down through the hole and I'm going to put the hole through the brass bush then I'll, I'll basically once I've got a hole through it I'll then open it up with a drill to you know 3.8 
um, and then I'm going to put the 4mm reamer down through, right down through the whole block and through what's going to be the bowl valve. So I've got it all in line. So that's the way I'm going to do it. Once I've done that, I'm going to mill a little flat on here, well, a flat that I can get without hitting my vice, on this top base, not all the way down, but just on this top base. And that will give me the reference of the plane of where the hole is when I come to put the throttle lever on the top. So I'll know, um, you know, I've got a, uh, a position where the throttle's wide open will be the lever at 90 degrees to this block. And to shut it, we'll have it in line. I mean, it's backwards to how you'd normally have it, but that's the way I want it to be. So, um, yeah, that's, that's that. So let's just pop that back out the hole. Put the clock away, tidy everything up, get a reamer up, and we'll go from there. So a quick, quick sanity check, put the reamer back in the chuck, and that goes straight in. So, yeah, right, okay, we're on centre. So, um, ee, look to see if i got a milling cutter, because I want to put a flat on here, or I could put a 4mm spotting drill in. Let's see if a 4mm spotting drill will fit down in that hole. Maybe so, that might be an easier way to do it. Because that will give me the divot. It will. So I'll have some good support with that drill. Should be able to find the middle. Um, I'll just spot it. Once I've spotted it, I'll put a 3.8 drill down through. And then back up with a reamer and through the lot. So I think we've got a plan. So, what? Speed we doing run out of travel <laughs> so I just want to divot in the brass is that touching it is okay there's a divot in the brass right Okay, so four mil spotting drill, we don't need that now. I'm hoping a 3.8 drill will go through there now. There's a 3.8 drill. So, 3.8 drill, that's only just gone under there. Okay. Right, drill through with a 3.8. So I'm only drilling through the brass valve. That's picked up nicely on the divot. That's where it's breaking through, the circular part the other side. Okay, that's through. And then four mil Rima. I think I'm gonna have to go back up for the head again. bad and the brass is coming out of the choke hole <laughs> a little bit of wobble in that I'm hoping it hasn't thrown up a massive burr am I through I'm through and I won't be able to get the valve out <laughs> or the spindle out I should be all right and the reamer should have removed the burrs I suppose I hope okay so that's that bit done right next step here is the throat this side has got to be larger than the throat at the other side so the four mil as far as that rotating valve I'm going to open up to 5mm. I've got a shaft 6mm here, so it's going to be a bit thin when I cut it, but that's fine. So I need to open this hole up to 5mm, and I've already done the calculation. From the point where the drill touches the, on its taper, I need to go down 20mm. So uh, let's get a 5mm drill. That does fit without moving the head. Okay, so if I just come down for a touch, there, 
20 mil from there. Let me just double check my book. Twenty will put it right in line with the edge of the bush. I'm going to go nineteen and a half. So, yeah. Speed that up. Already done the touch. Gonna break through with the choke ball now. She has. Heading down through now. Oh, now we're through into the choke port. That's touching the other side. And 17. Eighteen. Nineteen point five. Okay. Right. So that's the larger bore going down into a smaller bore. So we're going from five mil to four mil. That's what's going to help with the venturi effect to get fuels to suck through. That pressure increase uh, will help with that. So I do need to put a tapered bore in here. Ideally that will be done in the lathe. I can pick up on that 5mm hole in the lathe, holding on the four sides. Um, back in the four jaw, put a taper in there, and then do a bit of maybe something fancy on the outside. I don't know. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So, um, hopefully, oh, now I need to change over to a milling cutter and cut a flat on here. That's the next job, so we shall do that next. Okay, there's a nice flat on there, giving me the orientation. So, um, there's a great deal of room down in there where the clamp's going to go. I may have to have a rethink on that. Ah, it should be alright. Uh, yeah, it's okay. I've got a, got an idea. So, uh, let's have that back up out of the way. Right, uh, that can now be removed. Yep, that can now be removed. I've got a zero where that middle is, so I can put it back up there if I want to at any point. Um, is it worth me putting that in there? There's a little bit of formed in there now, isn't there? <laughs> Would be, wouldn't it? I'm just making sure I've got the right one. I have them, okay. Right, okay, there's a burr formed in there. Um, just pop the 6mm cutter back in there would probably remove the burr or a reamer. I wonder if I could put that in there and just spot the end of the shaft with a 5mm cutter. And that will give me the depth either side of where my two flats are going to be. So I'm going to machine two flats on this down to about a mil thick. And then obviously when it's one way... Um, the vein of the choke will be in line and when it's the other way it'll shut it off and they also have to drill a small hole in it so that it never actually shuts off completely so uh, do I do that at this stage and if so how do I clamp that in position to stop it turning uh, well I could can't get a tool maker's clamp around the outside now because I've got a great big slope. I could do that at any point. I can take it out, put it lower down in the vice, clamp on this with that jet taken out. So I think I will do that though. Um, just gives me that reference point. So out with that now. Hopefully, with a little bit of jiggery pokery, I'll be able to get that out of there. 
see the hole right through. That's a good sign. So the hole now goes right through the throat of the carb and the 5 mil hole goes just short of where it's going to hit that brass. So I may need to hold that with a, in my soft drawer vice and just give it a little tweak to get it out. I'll do that off camera. So it did come out fairly easily. My hole up through the bottom does enter out into that bore, so that's good. That means the main jet will fit up into here. Um, there's a bit of a burr there. I'm going to have to just gently oil stone around this just to take it back to the good diameter and we should be back fitty again. So I'm just putting a big flat on this one. I've set it back up, gone right down in uh, further on lower parallels, picked up that centre hole again, which was already on location because I had to stop. Um, yeah, I'm in the same orientation, I'm just lower in the vise. Went down through and spotted with the 5mm cutter a flat, um, and that'll give me the location lengthwise of where I've got to machine the flats, and they're going to be 5mm or 5mm high. So this has just got a scratch left. There we are. So I just stopped and measured a moment ago, and this flat is splitting the center point of that 8mm. So when I measured across, it was 4.45, and I've just done the last bit. No particular depth. Uh, depth in Y um, other than it's going to be bigger than the flange that's left there to clamp down on to keep it in the hole so um, that's that done uh, let's have the cutter out of the way now um, we're at a point now where I believe that can come back out of there my phone's dinging, I bet everybody's checking their phones now. Some sort of notification. I'll have a look in a minute. Um, so, again, that should be easy to get out of there, but that's my orientation for the two flats that are going to be the choke thin. So, that's 4mm. Um, I can register off there to do the flats in the correct orientation when I take it back out again. So, I think, do I do that next? Or do I do the turning on this end? I'm not going to lose anything on this registration if I do that. So I think I need to go back up in the lathe with both parts now. Uh, or do I need to keep that registration? If I turn it down, I'm going to lose that registration on that one. May have to look at this one again. I wanted to put for this one a slot through the centre. Um... And this one, I'm going to put a tapped hole. Ah, should I be doing the tapped hole in the middle of there now? Probably should. I'm going to put an M3 tapped hole in there, and then I can bolt a bar on as my choke lever. Um, yeah. Put the tapped hole in now that I've got it referenced flat. Yes, I'll do that. There we are, I think that's about it for this one, as I always say. Um, so yeah, not too long a video this one, and I have got a load of clips left, ready for perhaps I'll put one up midweek this week, who knows. Uh, it depends what I get up to this weekend for next weekend, so we'll see how it goes. If I don't get up to enough in the shed, then I'll probably uh, save the rest of the clips that I had, that I mentioned at the beginning, for next weekend's video. I'm waffling. Anyway... Thank you so much for watching, guys. Oh, great news. We've passed the 13,000 mark now, so that's brilliant. Thank you all so much for subscribing. And hit that thumbs up button if you like the video. Once again, thanks for all your support, guys. Cheers now.